1913, and I was uh, 13 years old in October. I was 12 years old when we come over here. Sir, what's your full name? Philip. Schaefer, S C H A E F E R. F E R. Okay, today is December 13th, 1984. This is Joe Todd, an interview with Mr. Philip Schaefer. Sir, where were you born? In uh, Russia, Siberia, just the place where that, where we left there, where my folks went there. See, Russia was given each one of them. Okay, what's, what's the name of the town? Oh, I can't think of that town anymore. It was just a little town, about 40, about 40 people lived there. See, Russia gave, they had a lot of land, and a lot of German people went in there, mm -hmm. and uh, they gave each boy so many acres of land. And wh when is your birthday? Huh? October. What? 1900. The 7th. 7th of October, 1900. 1900, yeah. Okay. Who is your father? John. John Schaefer. And your mother? Magdalena. And what was her maiden name? Hildebrand. Hildebrand. What did your father do for a living? Farmer, that's Farmer. all he done, yeah. That's what he was when we left out there. Yeah. Well, tell me some memories you had of Russia. Well, some people say Russia ain't, it's so bad. I've heard some of them talk about it. Mm -hmm. And all kinds of things, you know, that the Russia is so bad now. But listen, I'll tell you, Russia was just as good as the United States ever was. We lived there 13 years, 12 years. And my dad, he farmed. He put out wheat. Anything when, what he, they put in out, that was only about like Canada, two months, at the most three months summer. But everything matured. If you put out wheat, it matured. If you put out oats or barley, put out watermelons, put out corn, all that stuff would mature. The wheat, take about, oh, it was sold around first of, first of June. And uh, that was sold around first of June, and then in two months, it was cut already. <coughs> Just two months, that's all it taken for that to mature. Can you describe the town that you lived in? No, I can't. I can't remember that town. That's where it comes in. And it's right down, way down in Russia. It it got as low as 50 below zero where we lived. Was there, were you near Vladivostok in that area? Yeah, somewhere along in there. I don't know just the name of it. I knew the name, Hanovka, I think what they call it. Mm -hmm. Now, was your where was your father born? He was born in uh, Russia. What part? He was more in the eastern part. Eastern part. Yeah. I don't know where he come from out there. Now, Mr. Triber said that your father knew his father? Yeah. Well, maybe they did. Oh, okay. See, when we, when uh, Dad got married, they went into Russia. They're going to get some land there, you see. And uh, whatever they get, why, well, it wouldn't cost them nothing, just so they settled. And mm -hmm. they went in there. And they settled down. There was no house there or nothing. You had to do everything and it was in the winter time in the fall of the year or the, towards spring. Yeah. When did they move to Siberia? What what year? That was 1913. Or 19, uh, go back to, uh, that's just 13, 1900. That's when I was born. Okay, is that when they moved to Siberia? That's when they moved to Siberia. Okay. Hmm. See, see he, uh, he, he got married and then they went to Siberia and his folks went. See, he was still single. But then when he got this girl here, well, he got married. They were, they lived, it was in the southern part. And from there, they went to Russia, to Siberia, where it was cold, just like it is in places in Canada, you know, yeah. it gets awful cold up there. Tell me what you remember about life in Russia. Well, the life in Russia is just as good as any of us. I've been all over the United States and part of Russia. And there's one place like anything else that was just before the First World War started. 
we come over here. See the way we come over here in 13 and I think in 14, somewhere along in there, 15, where First World War started. Yeah, 1914. Yeah. That's when it started. Did your father ever serve in the Russian Army? Ah, uh, no. Okay, um, why were the Germans in Russia? Well, in Russia there was a lot of land and then he was, he went to church, he attended to church quite a bit and he wanted to come over here because he had some brothers over there, two of them, they come over here. Oh, that's three, why he came this country? Yeah, yeah. That three years before, before he come here. Okay. See, and then, uh, then we come over here, well, we, we landed at Canada and from there we went to North Milwaukee. Uh, can you tell me, okay, now you're of German descent, right? Yeah. Why were there Germans in Russia? Well, it, well, you know, it's just like it is in the United States. How many different kinds of people have we got and how many different languages? Mm -hmm. And there the Russians, they, they didn't want to work. And so they told them if they'd come over there and settle that country, they'd give them three acres of land for each boy they had, you see. Well, my dad didn't have any kiddos yet, just one, I was the first one born there in the same year. So he got his land and he settled down there and he was well to do when he left there. Hmm. How big was the farm in Siberia? Oh, maybe 15, 20 acres, something like that. Maybe 30 at the most. Never was any bigger. Just a few acres of wheat, and your wheat come up the size of this table here, and it was cut, and it was thrashed, and it was thrashed with the horses out on the ground, you know. You had the same equipment we had over here? Huh? Yeah. Same yeah, well, that, well, just like, uh, like now, like the, when we left there, there was a first combine come in there. Thrashing machine, not a combine, but a thrashing machine. It was power taken. See, it was driven by, uh, let's see, I think about eight horses, something like that. And then there was a drive shaft, one to the machine, and that to the cylinder, and then there was belts, and that came, went to the cylinder, and that's where they thrashed the wheat. That was one of our neighbors there. Mm -hmm. I know I was over there when they thrashed. We had ours thrashed already, and he had so much wheat, he couldn't get it all done in the fall of the year. Hmm. So in the spring when it thawed out, the wheat was all stacked at home in the fall. And then after that they, they thrashed it all and there was a, a place to have a blower on there, they had a carrier on there like the thrashing machines used to have here. They just carried the straw out there and there was two men out there. There was uh, stacking it out there. And that's the way they put the straw away there. But as far as uh, blowers or anything like that, I've never seen anything like that over there until we got them over here in the 1913, 14, 13. I worked for a fella and he had a trash machine, he had a blower on there. And it, everything was in the barn. We pulled the machine in the barn, had a stationary engine, there wasn't no engine to move the machine or anything. You all had to pull it around with horses. Mm -hmm. So I got a job there and I was pitching the bundles out of the out of the loft for 50 cents a day. Some, some people say, well, it's so bad in Russia. It was maybe bad. But I says, I was through this country for quite a while. I've grown up here and I went to school and I got an awful good German school. Um, what do you remember best or most about Russia? Well, I'll tell you, to remember most about Russia, we, when we thrashed our wheat in the fall, we had a three-day journey with horses and wagon to haul the wheat to water, you see. There's a ship sitting there and waiting. When we, we come up so far one day and then the next day we went in and sold our wheat and unloaded and by 
By noon, we was back on the road again, again going home. Mm -hmm. And then the next day, we got in home sometime in the afternoon, you see. And it was everything with the rest of them. Well, I went in with them in the fall, in the winter of the year, with sleds. Was uh, sleds and had uh, one horse on it, and had uh, and they had about two or three sleds like that, and the fellow taking the lead and the horses they all followed. Didn't have to be everyone there, one of them on there, you see, going in there. So we went so far, was a place to stay and feed your horses, and then at night we had another place to stay, just like we used to have here in this country. Were you anywhere near the Trans-Siberian Railroad? No, they was just putting a railroad through there when we left. They just had to build up a railroad, but it was about two days, about a day's drive to the railroad. Why did they build that railroad? Well, there was quite a bit of wheat in there. There's a lot of wheat raised in there in Russia there. We had a wheat crop. Well, Dad lost one crop, I think, all the years he was there. And he was there 13 years. Mm -hmm. Did you ever see the Tsar? Huh? Did you ever see the Tsar, Tsar Nicholas? Huh, no. No. Did your parents ever talk about him? No, they, I never, they never talked about anybody like that. The older people didn't do like we do now. Mm -hmm. You see, our kids, they find out everything. But them days, there wasn't nothing said about it. Did you have any idea that there was a revolution coming in Russia? No. There was no idea whatsoever. The, everything was quiet. But the, so many of the boys, they had to go to the army so long, about three years. Then they turned them out, turned them loose, turned them back home again. Well, when the war started, they picked them up first. They had to go first. They knew what they was doing and what they'd done, so that's the way it was. But I wasn't old enough yet. But by the time the war quit, I was ready to go. They, they had me checked up already. In, See, the, in this country? Yep, in this country, right here. Why did your parents decide to come to this country? Well, like I told you, they had seen a lot in the paper. They got papers from over here, daily papers and how everything was handled over here, and you don't have to go to war or anything like that, and that's why they came over this way. And a lot of Baptists over here, and the big churches building up and everything else, so they come over here. What church did you attend in Russia? In Russia, it was a Lutheran church. Lutheran church. Yeah. But my dad, before he left there, he got in with some Baptists, and then he turned to Baptists, and that's what, what we're on now. Of course, our parents are all gone already, but then they, they, was, uh, they come over here just on account of the churches uh, a lot. And then his brothers was over here, and they liked it. And there wasn't, he would get a job, he got a job, and then there was up in North Milwaukee. Then we had some relation down here in Shattuck. Mm -hmm. The next year, so when we come down here. Tell me about the trip over. Where did you get on the boat? Well, uh, we got on the boat in Russia. It was just about a day and a half drive. It was just a small river, just like the Mississippi. Then we went on it, I think, three days, something like that. And then we got on a train, and we was on the train about seven days by the time we got to the ocean. And where'd you get on the ship? At the well, I don't know what the name of it was, but it was a... Uh, uh, that's a German boat, uh, American. This is the... That's the same as we come on. What is his first word? Is that something America line? Yeah, the American line. What is... Uh, well, it's just like uh, German there. It's supposed to be a German American line. Okay. See, it's American line, what mm -hmm. it was, that's what we come on. What is this? This is the object where you carried your papers in. Then Dad left that for me, and I kept it, and I've kept it ever since I've been... Mm -hmm. He's been gone quite a while, but I kept it, and then now, when I heard about that, and I says, I got to hunt that up. I says, I'm going to show it to him. Yeah. 
But as far as the country was at that time, it was just as good as any country or the United States. You could go anywhere you wanted to. You could buy anything you want. You could sell anything you want. And there was no hold up whatsoever. Why the revolution? Huh? Why the revolution? Uh, that's something I can't figure out, why they started that. Well, Russia and Germany, they got together. You see, they got against one another. They started. And that's why it started. And uh, Germany was going to clean Russia out. But we went in over here, or they'd have never, they'd have never got it on the Russians. The Germany couldn't do it. It was a big country, had a lot of men and everything, but they wasn't equipped like we was over yeah. here, you see. Um, what kind of ship did you come over on? Well, that, that's a, that American ship. Okay. That's the ship we come over on. Tell me about the trip. How, where did you stay? Where did you... Well, yeah, there was three stores. Three different stores in there. What did you take with you? What could you pack to take? Well, just mostly your clothes. That's what you got. I've got a lot, you see. You left the whole farm, everything there? The whole there? farm and everything stayed there. All everything your belongings? Everything was sold. Horses were sold. Cattle were sold. My uncle taken over the farm. Well, he kept it one year. Then they take it that away from him, you see. He was in... <coughs> he was in the army. And when he got out, when they quit, why then he was... And then out to people so many so much stuff to this people and to them, and then some of them they didn't like him and they turned him in and the first thing you know they're taking him away. Huh. Was this during the revolution? Yeah. And and some of them mm -hmm. and some of them told them told them and then they come and picked him up and take him to the town where we were all our wheat there. That was about a day and a half's drive with the horses. Well, they'd taken him there, and then his wife went in there once, and then our was she going to go in there and see him again, and some of them come from there, and they told her, see, no use, go see him. He's dead. They throw him out in the, uh, in the lot, taking his clothes off him, and just let him lay out there. That's the way he died. People don't know what it really is just like it is our country. We always taking care of our country here. But just like some of the countries are now. But Russia was just as good and clean a country as there ever was. What happened to it? Well, they got uh, fighting one another, amongst one another. Japan and Germany. Russia, well, Russia taken some land away from them a few years before. And Russia and uh, Japan wanted it back again. Well, Russia, Japan and Russia, they worked together, and then there was another nation or two. They worked together, just like we do with uh, our countries over here. Yeah. Did your parents ever talk about the Russo-Japanese War? Uh -uh. No, 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 they never said anything about that. Yeah. See, they had a war there for the, the Russians and Germans, but my dad wasn't in there. And uh, still, at the same time, it was a... It was a good place. I went to Russia. I went to town with Dad a many times. In the winter time, fall of the year, load up some, so many sacks of wheat, take it down there, and uh, he'd have about three sleds or something like that. And then I'd get on one of them on the back one. He'd take the front one, and the way we'd go. Mm -hmm. Then made no difference how cold it was. You were stressed for it. What kind of house did you have in Russia? We had a house just like we have here, only it was a mud house mostly, built like a brick house. And how'd you make, was it just, how'd you make the, the bricks? Uh, we didn't make no bricks, it was just a wall, and they just, real thick, and they just set it up like that, and they just stood up like that. Just made out of mud? Dry, just made dry out of mud. real dry mud, you see. They had to have horses, put straw in them quite a bit, and then stirred it up good, then it we had two houses there, and we had barns and everything. That everything was built out of mud. What kind of roof did it have? Huh? Roof? Well, it just uh, some of them had straw on it, and some of it had something else on. Maybe put uh, mud on it, you see, and it wouldn't wash so bad. 
So that's the way it was there. Did that house keep you warm? Was it well insulated? Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, you had a wall about that thick, you see. Yeah. Then you had a big stove in there. It was about uh, six feet long, about three, two, two, three feet wide. And then it was stood up there about, oh, say about five, six feet. In the fall of the year, in the winter time, you take your straw and go in there and fire that up so it get plump. And then you had heat in there all the time. And then you had another stove in there where you, uh, where you uh, cook your stuff on. Had a stove there, had a big kettle, had ovens in there. You heat them ovens up, put your bread in there, and that was it, you see. You didn't have to put in the fire in there. It was hot enough for the bread to make. Where'd you start to school? I started, in school. I started in Russia to school. That's why I got my best school. How big was the school in Russia? Well, let's see. Oh, I expect there was about 50 kiddos or something like that in that school at that time. Remember your teacher's name over there? No, I don't know or remember their names. Was the school in German or Russian? In German. German? Yeah, but I was just ready to go to a Russian school. You see, so many years you had a Russian, had German school, and then after that you had to learn Russian school. Where were you going to go to the Russian school? Well, it would have been right there. We'd have had a teacher there, a Russian teacher. See, you fellow that, just like you're here in the United States, if we come in there, some of the German people, they talk German, you know, the kiddos. Well, they'd watch them. I know where I lived out there. Well, they, they watched them. See that they wouldn't talk German. Well, they'd go out in the bathroom, but then they'd go talk, and then they catch them out, well, then they make them come in and sit down. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have a German teacher or a Russian teacher? No, it was a German teacher. German teacher. Yeah. So you could stand up. Uh, understand both languages, and she could uh, teach both languages. How long did you go to the German school? Oh, let's see. I think I was around six years old, and I went to school around six or seven, and I went till 12. I had about six years school, and I had one of the best schools there ever was. I could read and write and do anything that come along. How did that school differ from the schools over here? Well, it was the same thing. You had so much, uh, you had so much reading to do, and they put your figures up there to figure them out, figure everything out like it should be. And then, when they started the Russian school, why well, you got your Russian books and everything, but you could learn just like it was here when I come in here. I had always good school. But when I come in here, I had to go and work out. I was too young yet to, all I could have went to school. If I had went to school just two years in the United States, I would have went with anybody. Because I know I was in the first grade, and then they'd have put the figures up there on the paper. Well, I could figure all them, what they, if I'd find out what they wanted, I could figure every one of them. It didn't make no difference. Same way with the arithmetic. I was up till 12. So that's where it comes in at it. If I'd have had the school like I should have had, I'd have been all right. But then I worked out, you get around people like where we was in Texas there, and uh, around them cowboys. Well, you didn't have much chance to learn anything there, you see. And I didn't read it. Now. Did you speak Russian? No, I couldn't speak Russian that way. Some of the words I could understand, but not all of them, you see. That because there uh, wasn't no Russian speaker in there. Okay. How long were you on the boat coming over? Uh, let's see, we was nine days and three quarters on the boat alone, on the water. That's all we was on the water. Tell me about the trip. Well, let's see, we Where'd started... you sleep and all this? Yeah, well, we see, we started out on the water, and then we got on the train, then we went to the train. Well, it was seven days on the train, and we... <clears throat> then when we got to the ocean, then they taken us off of there, and we stayed there a few days till the, our ship was ready to go, you see. Till they had a load of us, so some coming in all the time. Did you travel across Russia? Huh? Yeah. yeah. You, we traveled clear across Russia. Yeah. Are you, you mentioned seven days on the train. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it was way in the northern part, you see. Yeah. And this was in the southern part. You see, we got, we got uh, when we got close to England, 
They stopped there and they loaded butter there. Butter? Yeah. Ship come in from the side and we was anchored there. The ships come up there and they loaded butter and then they went on again. Where did you get on the ship to cross the ocean? I think it was uh, in, uh, well, it was right on Russia, at the, on the ocean. Russia, Russia was on the ocean, and that's where we got our ship. Was it in from. the Baltic Sea in that area? Somewhere along in that, but I don't know just exactly. See, the kid didn't pay much attention to it, which I should have been better off. Yeah, Mr. Triberg said they got on the ship at Hamburg, Germany, where they got off. Well, they, they was in Germany, you see. Maybe we did get on that, but it says here, American. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, how long did it take to cross from England to Canada? From from England, England to Canada? How long did it take to cross oh, the Atlantic? Nine days and three quarters. And tell me what you did on the boat. Huh? What did you do on the boat for those nine didn't days? Didn't do nothing up there. Just sat around like I do now. If you couldn't do nothing, you could go up on top and go around and look out. But there's only one day, all the time we was on there, where it was rough, where the ship was, just like that, all the time. Did you get seasick? No, I didn't get seasick. Oh. There's a lot of seasick on there, but I didn't. And then after that, why, the rest of the time, why, it looked just like a tank. Yeah. Just like... Were most of the people on there are coming to this country? There's coming, most of them coming to this country. Yeah. Okay. All that got on there, they, well, some of them stopped at Canada, you see. That's where we landed. And then from there, we take in the train and come over here to North Milwaukee. Great. What part of Canada did you? It was in the eastern part. Uh, uh, Halifax. Halifax, Nova Scotia? Uh, yeah, H Halifax, Canada, I think it was. Okay. It was in Canada where we got on the, that's where we got off the ship and got on the boat. Have to go through customs yeah. at Halifax? Yeah. Tell me about that, what they do. Well, we we stopped. We had to stop at uh, the ninth day. We stopped out on the ocean, and uh, we stopped out on the ocean, and they wouldn't let us in till the next morning because they all had to be examined, see if it was all all right. Well, when we got there the next morning, well, every one of us. <coughs> <coughs> All right, except my aunt, my 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 grandma, dad's mother. She was kind of sick, and they thought they'd have to send her back. And they we had to fool around there putting her whole whole day. But she caught cold. She was out that night. You see, it was raining a little bit, and stayed out too much that night. And she got cold. So they checked her, and finally said, "Well, she can go." Did your grandmother talk much about Russia? No, she wasn't much with us. She was mostly with some of the, her other other boys in uh, North Milwaukee. Yeah. See, we come down here, and she stayed up there. Why did you go to North Milwaukee? I had two, two uncles there, my, my uh, dad's brothers. And then when did you come down to Shattuck? About a year later. That 1914? Yeah, something was wrong there, yeah. And why'd you come down here? Well, they had quite a few people here. They was related to him, and they had farms here, and he wanted to get back on the farm, you see. He had to put a good-sized family, and you know, work wasn't too much. Of course, they all worked at that time, but it wasn't like, a, like on the farm, I guess. So we went on the farm here, and stayed on the farm here. Well, <coughs> we stayed on the farm then until I quit. But finally, he he lost lost mother, and then they married another woman, and I got married, and now I went to I stayed here one year in Higgins, Texas, and then I went to St. Joe, Michigan. Let me back up. What kind of work did your father do in North Milwaukee? In North Milwaukee, well, just any kind of work he could get, you see, in, in shops. <coughs> Did your father file on a claim down here? Down here? Yeah. No, he never filed. He bought a place. He never bought a place. He was, uh, he never got a place. He was renting all the time while he was here, you see. And he, he had an uncle that was down here? Yeah, they was in, they was in uh, North Milwaukee. Okay. And 
dad, he come down here. He had some of the relations down here. Okay, what relation was down here? Cook was their name. Mm -hmm. That K O C H. Yeah. And what relation were they to you? Well, I don't know what I'd say to them because they was they was related a little bit. <coughs> but really, what they was related related, I couldn't say. Okay, how did the, how would you compare the farming to this area, to the farming in Russia? Well, it was about the same thing. You see, we, when we come here, we had horses to farm with. And that was the same way there. You could plow your ground and then sow it right away. Mm -hmm. Now, did you live with the Cook family? Huh? Did you no, live with the Cooks? No, no, we had our own place. Okay. <coughs> that was his, that grandpa had. Uh, my grandpa, what was my dad's dad, they was there in the same place, and then that one of them that got killed in the army. Well, two of them, two of the boys was there, and they was both got killed in the army. What, in World War One? Yeah, World War One. yeah. That's okay. what they both got killed. He, which army were they in? Huh? They was uh, in Russia. You in see the Russian Russia, army. they had to be with Russia. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And Russia, you know, when Sherman was pretty well prepared, <coughs> but then still at the same time, I can't, uh, for otherwise, why, there wasn't anything different here than it was in Russia, or Russia and here. You could go in the worst you wanted to. And if you want to go in the worst, well, you could go and you could do what you want, go to church, you was allowed to go there, and you could go to school. But the main thing was first the German, and then the English, then the Mer uh, the Russian. Then you had to get the Russian language and yeah. speak Russian. Did you ever attend the Russian Orthodox Church? No. The only church I attended besides ours was a, my dad used to have Catholic men and a woman both. After he got up a little higher, he had a lady and a man working for us all the time. And I'd okay. go over where they lived. It was about, oh, maybe six or eight miles to another town. I'd yeah. go over there with them, stay all night, and the next day we'd come back home again. That was in Russia? That was in yeah. Russia, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... Do you have any other stories of Russia that you can remember? No. As far as I know now, just like a lot of people say, well, how was it in Russia? Well, it's less, just like I told you. You could go anywhere you wanted to. You could do anything. You just just like it is here. You could go go to a different town. You gather your wheat, haul it to town, and sell it, and it'd be the same thing, just like it was here. That's that was no difference whatsoever. Only I know that the second or first world war when we was in there, it got kind of rough a little bit, but then. You know, that's the way it was all over. But as far as I know, Russia was just, well, I, I heard one guy say something <coughs> about Russia being so bad. Well, he wasn't over there. And I caught him at it. I says, was you over in Russia? No, people say it that way. I says, well, I says, I was about 13 years old when we come over here. And I says, I didn't see no difference Russia and in the United States. What were your feelings when the revolution broke out? Well, we didn't know what would happen before it, because it wouldn't, because I was already li lined up for, for the army. They had me already done. Of course, I wouldn't have had to win. All I'd have had to do is to tell them to give me my citizen paper and my dad. And you know, it didn't take 24 hours to get your paper. It didn't. When did you become a citizen? I come out uh, to become a citizen in Shattuck. What year? In uh, 36. 36. Yeah. I was married then already. My wife, she was a citizen. She was born over here. But they were going to draft you even though you weren't a citizen? Yeah. Well, I, was, I wouldn't have had to go. Okay. All I had to do is just tell him. I know one boy over there, his dad didn't have the papers and they, he, was, he was supposed to go. Well, he says, I'm not going. I don't have to go. I'm not no citizen. 
But he says, you gave me my papers and my dad's papers. And you go. And he did. That's what they done. And it didn't take very long. Because to get my citizenship had taken two years. That only taken 24 hours. Yeah. See the difference? Mm -hmm. Because they needed the, need the, the When you heard that they had shot the czar, what did you think? Well, see, we was too, we were kind of young. We didn't pay so much attention to it like we do now. That is, the young people, the kiddos, they know putting their everything after they're about 10, 12 years old, they know putting their everything's going on here. Because the folks will tell them. But it was altogether different in that country. The kiddos didn't find too much out. Till we got ready to go, well, all right, we'll go. So they <coughs> they started in the fall of the year, and they didn't get all their wheat trash. We didn't get all our ours trashed. Well, we trashed in the spring then with the horses. And one of our relations there, we come in together. And he was in here once before, and he went back out. And he stayed out there 10 years. Then he come back in again, or 12 years. That's the way he come. Then he come back in here again. And uh, he had a lot of wheat. He was pretty well to do. He had a few boys. One of the boys was as old as I am, and they had two or three boys. They was older than I was. And they all come back in here again. And they got quite a bit of land. And anything they wanted, all they had to do was ask for it, and they'd help them get it. Mm -hmm. Because they knew they uh, they could get their money out of them, they wouldn't have to be afraid. So that's the way that was. I, I, to tell you the truth, I like it. Only there's some other countries now we should not have much to do with. We're having, losing too many of our men, which we shouldn't lose. Yeah. Um. How many years did you attend school in this country? Me? I did. I only one winter. One winter. One winter. Were you living around here? Ah, uh, no. We was in uh, Green Bay, Wisconsin. Okay. See, it was in uh, North Milwaukee, and they was looking for people to <coughs> work their sugar beets. Well, my dad, my dad taking a job like that, so many acres of sugar beets. And then we went to Green Bay, Wisconsin, and that's where I started the school. When did you move to Green Bay? It was in the fall and in, in the spring of the year. What year? I was in uh, 14. <clears throat> okay, you moved from Shattuck? No, no, from uh, North Milwaukee. Oh, okay, North Milwaukee to Green Bay. Green Bay, yeah. And then how long did you work in that? With then we was in there about a year. Then you came down? Then we came down here. Were, did people show any resentment to you during the First World War because you were German? Well, they didn't do so much here. That, well, here Shattuck was one of the worst towns around. What they did? <coughs> what the people in Shattuck do? They, they wouldn't let them come in. They didn't want to trade with them or not, to tell you the truth. Higgins was a nice town. Everybody went to Higgins to do their trading, and then people up there, the storekeepers, they said, just come on up here, talk anything you want. It ain't going to hurt us. They can't do nothing to you because you are German people. And here in Shattuck, they, was, they put in a, went under before they got so they could turn loose again. You see, all the wheat they raised around here, that all went to Higgins. And they didn't get none here, and people didn't come and buy nothing. How come Shattuck had that? I don't know. There were some of them guys, they, they, were, they was even Germans, and they hated them because they was in here. And they were just the same Germans as they was, same nationality. Yeah, I heard that some of the Germans were tarred and feathered. Yeah, they was. Why did they do that? I don't know, because they didn't believe in that they didn't want them to stay in the United States. That's where a lot of trouble started, right here at Shattuck. They was going to tar and feather some of them. Did you see anyone tar No, no, I've never seen any of them. But that's where it started. But then uh, that war lasted quite a while, you know, till 1918. What did you do on Armistice Day? 
Well, I don't know just about like we always used to do. I would and try to take care of the country and do whatever they wanted you to do here, just like any, any place else. Just like if you go in the other country, well, you've got to kind of go with their laws they have here, okay? November 11th, 1918, the war ended. Yeah, that ended there, yeah. That Did you have a big celebration that day? Yeah, they had a, lots of it. Everything was going like everything, all over town. What did you do that day? Well, I don't think I'd done much of anything because I was too young. But then I know they had a lot of riled up when they heard that uh, war, World War One. That was World War One come to an end. Mm -hmm. That's that. That was right. That was. They was glad to see it. Mm -hmm. And where was the farm that you were working down here? Huh? Where was the farm that you were renting down here? Oh, down here I worked. Uh, I worked for guys in Texas till I was uh, 24 years. What part of Texas? Uh, around down by Canadian and Higgins, north of uh, Higgins and north of Canadian. Is Higgins in Texas? Yeah. yeah. Higgins is in Texas. Oh, no, Higgins, I mean Glacier. Glacier. Glacier and the Canadian. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're, they're in, in Texas. And what did you do over there? I was on the farm, farming, just like I did when I was at home. What did you do? The horses plowing. And that day I had quite a few cattle. Mm -hmm. So there was too much farming to do. It was mostly taking care of yeah. cattle. What kind of cattle did you have? They had the same thing as I had here. Or Herefords? Yeah, Herefords, yeah. yeah. Good cattle. When did they first bring the Herefords in this country? I don't remember when they brought them in here, but they was here when we come here. Okay. Still have the Longhorns here? I see a lot of Longhorns, and a lot of people got the no horns at all. You see, they bred, bred them up. Mm -hmm. Just like the you take a you take a a male uh, white, uh, a male with horns on and breed the cow to it. And that, that calf won't have no horns. Hmm. And there's a lot of them done that. A lot of them bought, taking the uh, black bull and bred the cows to it, and they turned out just like, the, like that calf was. Mm -hmm. yeah. No horns, but still, you still had the same, same work with them as you did with the others. You had to take care of them. And, uh, as far as I know, I can't say nothing against our nation. There was plenty of things when it happened. I didn't like it, but then it was that way all over. Mm -hmm. but when did you return to Oklahoma? <clears throat> we turned into Oklahoma in 1914. No, when, when you're from Texas. Oh, from Texas? Yeah. Well, see, my folks lived in here, and they lived in Texas, and then I went to work for tax people. Then about three years later, then they come back here again. Okay. Well, then I come back here again, and then from here, I stayed around here about a year or two. I think I was 21 years old, 22, 23. Then I went to Michigan. I had a sister up there, and they wrote us. And then me and my brother went up to Michigan. That was in 23. Why'd you go to Michigan? Because you, just your sister was up there? Or? Well, it was shop work, and I didn't, I didn't care too much about farming. So where, where did you work in Michigan? In shops. Where at? At uh, St. Joe, Michigan. In the foundry. What did you do in the foundry? Uh, I was grinding. Hmm. Grind the iron, you see there was knobs on there where the water, as iron went in, you had to grind that off and then it goes somewhere else. Then they go into a mill and then they had a lot of gravel in there that clean all that stuff off of there, what was on that. Mm -hmm. See, it was packed in ashes. What were you making? For any kind of car. Wishbones, wheels, any kind of stuff like that, you see. And then, uh, then we left, then I went, I stayed up there, and then I come back down here in the spring. And then I was gonna go back up again. And then I got married, and then the next year, me and my wife went up there, and we was up there two years up under three years and then we come back down here. We stayed a year here again and I wish I would have never stayed. Then we went back up again and then 
1930, we come back down here for the, the wheat. Yeah. Um, then, Did the uh, depression bring you back yeah. out here? Well, it didn't bring me. I had my job up there. I had a good job up there. Mm -hmm. How come you quit? My wife, she was from down here, and she wanted to come down here. Where did you meet your wife? I met her right here in Shattuck. She was born here. What's her name? Victoria Schaefer. Seamus was her first name. What was her maiden name? Victoria. And what was her? Uh, Seamus. How do you spell that? S-C-H-O-E-M-H-A-L-S. And you were married in what year? Um, 24, <laughs> October the 10th. I was 24 years old. You just had your 60th wedding anniversary, didn't you? Huh? You just had your 60th anniversary? Yeah. yeah. We just had it here a while back. We had our 60th anniversary. Yep. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the depression and the dust storms down here. Well, I tell you, people got along all right. They got along better now than they do now. Everybody helped everybody out. If they had a man had something to do, They'd go and help him. If he was building a house, they helped him. If he was building a barn, they went and helped him. Well, this is all past nowadays. They, they won't help anybody anymore. If you help anybody, they have to pay you for it. But in them days, when we was here, why, it was easy. Anybody build a barn or something like that, you'd go and help them a day or two. And if you had something to do, they'd come and do the same thing, you see. Mm -hmm. But then, and then in the, we was on the farm in 30 when, when they come down here. And then in the 23, we bought a place. Where? Right here in Shattuck, south of Shattuck here. How big was that place? How many acres? Uh, 320. Half a section. What did you raise on that place? Well, we raised corn, we raised milo, wheat, capricorn, all kinds of grain, oats. Mm -hmm. When did you see your first thrashing machine? When did you see your first thrashing machine? The first one I seen in Russia in 1913. 1913. Yeah. And that was worked by horses. Mm -hmm. When we come over here, they was had steam engines, some of them, and gas engine. But they was kind of small, too big a machine. Mm -hmm. And I was, uh, well, I was uh, about 20, 19, 20 years old, and I worked for a fellow out of uh, Tampa, Texas. I worked for him, and he asked me, he asked me, he, I think, he says, are you? know anything about a machine? I says, I can run a machine or engine either one. He says, that's the guy we want. What's so, his, what was his name in Tampa? I don't know what the man's was. They come in from Kansas. Had a big Rumley outfit. That is a Rumley steamer, a uh, Rumley gas engine and a Rumley separator. And when we go out in the morning, it was daylight, and before the sun was down, we was back in the shed, and we had over 3,000 bushel of wheat thread. He had eight men on there, four to the side, and when they pulled in, this, in between the stack, it was no time that stack was full. It was a 30, 36 or 42 inch machine to sell them that wide. How big were those stacks? Huh? How big were the stacks? Well, the stacks was pretty good size. Some of them was put along, about as long as from across this building here, and then there was put wide. And they put them out of wheat, and then they put a, they had a long uh, extension uh, carrier on there. It would reach the way out there. How does that thrasher work? Huh? How do you operate a thrasher? What does it do? Well, it thrashes the machine just like a combine does. See, you had a steam engine, or if you had a gas, you had a gas engine on there. And the big belt, and that belt set out there about clear out to the street, you see, that far away. How did it, re how did it remove the wheat from the kernel, from the husk? Well, they had a cylinder in there, concaves. See, they had concaves in there. Now they got all rasps in there to knock it out, you see. It don't crack as much wheat. 
But when we got, it was all, uh, it was concaves. And the fellow I worked for then, he says, well, he says, we got a machine up there, it's got to have so many teeth, and it's got to take all them out and put on new ones. <coughs> and I says, it'll take a couple of days or better. <coughs> he says, put them in so they'll stay. I says, all right. So I went out there, and I went out, and I got my hammer, and loosened them up, taking taps off of it, and when it was loose, I'd hit it, take it out, Got them all out, and then put new ones in there. And yes, a lot of fellas, he had fellas who put them in, or maybe the first day or two, they'd come out and just tear everything up. Now you said the thrasher was how wide? 30? 36 inches. And what, what part of the thrasher is that? That's the front end, where your wheat goes in. And you put the wheat in that end? Yeah, in that end, you see, and then it goes out the back. Then by the time it gets to the back, it's got an elevator that goes up on top, and some of them went one right out in the wagon. Okay, and then you loaded the wheat in the wagon? Yeah, loaded the wheat in the wagon. And that goes to the elevator? That went to the elevator and went home mostly. Ninety percent of the wheat went home in the granary. Mm -hmm. See, they didn't, they didn't haul much wheat at all. Was this here, or this in Russia? Yeah, that, right here. Yeah. Okay. And the same way it was in Russia. Okay. Everything went in the granary. Who owned the elevator here in Chattanooga? Uh, Engel Brothers. They're not in it anymore. They're not? No. No, it's some other outfit bought them out, and they're gone. Well, all the older fellas, they all passed away, and then there was just a son-in-law. Mm -hmm. Is that elevator still here? Yeah, it's still here. No, no, it's, it, it was a, they built a big elevator there. Okay. There's a, a big tank, and they in it out to bought it now. Bought the whole thing, everything they had. But there was about three or four different elevators here in this town at that time. Hmm. Yeah. And they come out there and each one of them, they tr all try to buy their wheat and they give a cent more or maybe two cents more and the next guy would give a little bit more. The guy that paid the most for it, well, then it went. <laughs> now they got one price and that's all. <coughs> Tell me about the dust storms. Well, the dust storms, it was pretty bad. We didn't raise much wheat, and it wasn't so bad here. It was pretty bad here, but mostly it was in Texas, Delhart, Texas. That country was nothing but flat. Everything was gone. People went out there two or three years before that. And all the crops they raised, and boy, they getting rich. Guys just about my age. And their dad was with them. They helped them out, and they went out there. And there's only one man stayed out there, the rest of them left. Where'd they go? Well, they come back here again. Mm -hmm. Got them some land in different places. What did a dust storm look like? Well, I tell you, it's pretty bad sometimes, but whenever a dust storm, there's just everything dark. Birds can't fly, and that's, that's a lot of difference in that. Mm -hmm. I seen a lot of that, and I went through a lot of that. Went through in good times and I went through in bad times. Just like it is now, not that it's going to ruin my home. I was going to ask you, did you want to leave Russia? Huh? Did you well, it didn't make no difference to me. The folks that wanted to go, so we just went with them. Mm -hmm. So it didn't matter to you? Huh? It didn't make no difference to me. Mm -hmm. What did you do on the day that you received your citizenship? I was down in Elk City, Oklahoma. You see, they started here at uh, Ornette, and they couldn't get it done. How come they couldn't get it done? Well, they didn't have sense enough. <laughs> when I went in there to get my papers, why? They didn't know where to start. But I had a book already where it told me what I had to do what I had to come up with. And they asked me two questions. What were they? Uh, where I was born and where I lived. And that's all. But I had to do a lot of study, you know. If they'd ask me anything else, why well, then that'd be it. Mm -hmm. What kind of oath did you have to take? Huh? You had to take an oath? No, no, they would come in there. There was a bunch of them in there. <coughs> 
Uh, several of them, and then you go in, to, they take you in the room where the judges was, and they're all lawyers and everything. They'd ask you this question, they'd ask you that question. All right, if you could answer it, that was it. They'd give you your papers. Did the judge talk to you at all? No, they didn't talk much to you. They asked, oh, they asked, oh, I like it here, and this and that, and I told them I like it. That's why I'm here yet. <laughs> But it, it's a it's a problem. That's the same way it was in Russia. I don't know how there was in Russia there about to come and be a citizen there, but there was a lot of difference in here than there was out there. Of course, used to years ago when the people first come in here, you see one of them sign his papers for him because he was a citizen. Already. What did you think of Adolf Hitler? Well, I don't know. I don't know, I didn't have too much to do. Some things maybe was all right. <coughs> and some of them, I guess, wasn't all right, you see. That's where it comes in at. They had a good country, and they had a good army there. And some way up there, they want to go in there and run him out. Well, he, he, he was just enough stuff he had that they couldn't run him out. Had too many of them trained till, and they went backwards till we got in there. And we, when we got in there, then they just did. They just couldn't hold it. There was just not enough power there. What did you do in the war, World huh? War Two? What did I do? Yeah, I was on the farm. Did you do any work to support the war effort afterward? No, no. Like the bond drives or anything? Did no, you? no. See, I was uh, I was working on the farm. Was there any hatred toward the Germans in that war, in World War II? Oh, yeah. World War II? No, I don't think there was anything there. Not that I remember. Not like Unless World War One. No, but World War I was bad. Yeah. Yeah. That was bad. Did they do anything to you personally no. in World War I? No, they didn't do nothing to us. We was there, we lived there in the country, and we got out. When the wheat we raised, we taken it to town, sold it, got our money for it, and that was it. Here in Shattuck? No, not a shot it was That was when we, uh, let's see, we left out there by a Canadian. Yeah, okay. Yeah. See, and, and, and then when we, uh, when then we got a farm here, and then we, right by us there was an elevator, Goodwin. Mm -hmm. That's where we hauled our wheat. Yeah. It was only about a mile and a half, something like that. Like. What was your reaction when the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor? I didn't know what to say, but I couldn't say nothing about it, because some of them fellas wasn't citizens, so they had to watch out, see what they say. See, I wasn't no citizen then. Well, that was in 41. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was citizen then. Yeah. But they, they didn't they didn't say, it. oh, when they bombed it, yeah, when the Japanese bomb bombed it, yeah. Yeah, I didn't like that, but that's where, where they come they come after me. See, they asked me what I, I could do and what, I, what, what my work was, and I told them I'm a farmer, but I wasn't. Uh, North Milwaukee, and I was punch press operator, or electric welder, or settling cutter. And see, and that's the ones they wanted, and and, uh, and and shops up there. Of course, when it first started, there was none but men in there. But then after the war, after it started, and finally they went to hiring women. And that's the same way it was here. And there was some of the guys. All once some of the guys come around, me and another guy. He was a baller. Like he always run a steam engine, putting in flues, and I could do that too. Mm -hmm. And they said, they're going to get you two guys yet before it's over with. They're going to send you out of here. Did they? No, they didn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, they didn't send us out. We stayed here until two days. What have you done since then? Since then, I've been a farmer. Mm -hmm. I farmed till I was... Uh, 74 when I quit. Why'd you quit? Well, just me and my wife and my daughter, and I says, why should we farm longer? I says, we got a, got a good start and everything. I says, they no use. How many kids did you have? We just had two of them. One of them passed away. He was 20, 21 years old. Mm -hmm. the boy. And the daughter, she's still, she lives at Ponca City. Her husband, he works for Conoco. His boss, 
in Conical. He started out when they, while well, he was working for Conical when they got married. And he was hauling the water where they going across the country. And they went, there was an ever state of the union. And so all at once he was in, in uh, Ponca City. And then the fellow from a firm down, Paul's Valley down there, winner. There's a fellow down there, I knew him. And he says, send him down here. I think he'll make a good man. Of course, he didn't have the college, but he had a good school. So he went down there, and I think he was down there hardly a year. And they sent him, well, he was boss already in the seismic, seismic craft, you see, where they go from one place to another. Yeah. They used to drill, but now they had an art that they could Electric, then the color worked better. Do you ever think back on Russia? No, I don't think very nothing to me anymore. I'm out of there and I got a good life. So, did you leave any besides your one, your uh, aunt and uncle that stayed there? Oh yeah, yeah. That was did someone. you leave any other family yeah. members there? Yeah. What, what, happened, what happened to them? My uncles. Well, I don't know what happened. Some of them I didn't even hear. They were still alive. I had an aunt. She went to, I mean, a niece. She went over there, but she went over there twice in Russia. But she could never go there where we lived. I can't. They wouldn't let her go there. It wasn't a fix for it. Just so close and then all right. And then a year or two later, she went back over there again. Then she got closer. But she couldn't go there yet where they lived. But they said that place is a big city, electric lights and everything else. That many people moved in there in about one year or two. And that was a good country. It was raised a lot of wheat there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And a lot of snow there too. <laughs> <laughs> I was just a kid, I had a sled and I'd get up on top of the house, down I'd go. It snows that high. Morning, you had to get up and get out and scoop snow so you could get light in the window. Is everything still up? Well, Mr. Schaefer, I think we had a good interview. <laughs> well, I think I told you about all I know yeah. and the way things was in Russia. Why, well, it's just like it was here. Yeah. Only it's different now. A lot different. You see, we used to didn't have to go the same way in Russia. We didn't have to go farmed our land, and here it was that way too, and then all at once, now we're losing so many farmers, because they don't get nothing for their work, and they're buying two bigger machines. I never farmed for myself with horses, I had a tractor, I farmed with it. And I stayed on the farm, I went in on 24 and went out on, no. 43, 44, <coughs> well, I was, uh, <coughs> we lived 20 years out here in this other place, 40 years, we lived 40 years, and then when, uh, 1934, 36, <coughs> well, we've been in, in here just a year now. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you. Thank yeah. You. Okay, this is December 13th, 1984. This is Joe Todd, an interview with Eve Callaway in Shattuck, Oklahoma. Yes. Ma'am, where were you born? I was born in Pratt, Kansas, 1893. What month and day? December the 22nd. Who was your father? My parents was Mr. and Mrs. I.O. McCullough. McCullough? McCullough, M-C-O-L-L-O-U-G-H. Okay. What was your mother's name? Well, mother was uh, Mrs. Tilly Holder, Tilly Greer Holder. Mm -hmm. Were they both from Kansas? Let's see, uh, Mama was in Missouri and Papa's Indiana. 
Was your father a farmer? Papa was an engineer and a mechanic and, uh, uh, well, what do you call a carpenter? Uh, carpenter is what I call it. Well, anyway, he did all kinds of things like that. That was his line of work, you know, was doing that. Okay. We lived on a farm, however, but he was no farmer. Okay. Mama was the one that one of the three kids raised on the farm, so we stayed on the farm. Now, you say he was an engineer on the railroad? Yes, out of uh, Pratt, Kansas. Okay. When he started in to Dallas, uh, from I went from uh, from Kansas from Pratt to Dalhart, mm -hmm. and uh, so on. He was did that work, and they got married, and and uh, I don't know how many years he did that, but anyway, he finally decided to go into the uh, uh, carpenter field, and and then he got into the the uh, run the thrash machines and did machine work like that, mm -hmm. just a general. How long did you live in Kansas? Well, Papa was born there, I think, in Can in Pratt, uh, in Indiana, and then lived there by I don't know how many years that uh, when Grandfather came there and uh, so on. Did your Grandfather homestead in Kansas? Grandfather uh, McCullough. McCullough. Yeah. I can't tell you that at all. Was he in the Civil War? Your grandfather McCullough? No, he was. Uh, he was. Uh, yes, he was a Northern soldier, and Mama's father was a Southern soldier. Mm -hmm. It's been so long ago that I've kind of forgotten. Uh, and they never did visit us a whole lot, you know, and tell us the history of their lives and everything and so on, but Grandfather Holder was in the Southern Army and Grandfather Mack was in the Northern Army. Ever hear any stories about them in the war, about well, what they did? Well, not too much. They would uh, be sitting there and we kids would have to listen in. We didn't ask questions or anything like that. I think Grandfather was just a young fellow when he went into the Army and he told how they nearly starved to death and all this, that and the other and so on. And and uh, so uh, I saw a, a picture on the television the other day of that old uh, prison that so many of those soldiers died in. Andersonville. Anderson down there. Yes. Yeah. And uh, so on. And uh, but that's uh, but that's about as much as I know about the uh, <coughs> about the history. Papa was born in Indiana and came out to Kansas and and uh, grew up out there in Pratt and. Uh, Grandfather Holder, and uh, they lived at uh, Nottoway County, Missouri. That's where they came from, down that track. Mm -hmm. How long did you live in Kansas? Well, I was just a kid when Papa made the run in Cherokee Strip. Mm -hmm. And he had a, a it was over by uh, the south of Alba, out in there, you know, some, wherever it was. And he made his uh, claim, and he just had the horse and saddle, and he'd slip all night on that ground there. Got up the next day, and there sat a woman up about a half a mile or a quarter of a mile from him on the same claim. So he got up and rode off and let her have the place. And so uh, that's... Uh, and then he made the run, well, we went to uh, Roger Mills County, Oklahoma, down 13 miles north of York City and 18 miles uh, east of Cheyenne and six miles west of, of uh, what was the town's name? Anyway, down in there. And when I, I was seven years old when we came back up in this part of the country. So I was just a little old kid when we had, I think there just two of my sister and I, when, when uh, Papa took this claim down there on the, on the Washita River. Mm -hmm. Did and your father ever talk about making the run? No, he never did uh, say only that much. That uh, he made the run and that got cheated out of his land, and so he never did, and so on. So then we, uh, I've seen pictures of the, uh, of the 
people that were going in wagons and horses and things like that, but Papa was a horseback, and he went down there, and he, he stopped there. And uh, so then when we went to Roger Mills County, uh, I don't know what he intended to do down there because uh, he was, uh, it was a new country, cattle country. The Moody's from, I'm down in Texas, uh, had cattle all over that country and everything. So they filed, he filed on this piece of land and he built his house out of, uh, he burnt the uh, uh, jeep and built him a house, one room house. Of course the Indians lived at Hammond, that's out of the, that's the name of that town, was six miles. And uh, the Indians would ride up and uh, they'd want chickens. And uh, they'd have some little trinket or some little thing and Papa would get her, catch him a chicken and tie his feet together and, and give it to him and they'd give him some kind of a little trinket. And so we got along all right with the Indians. And so one day Mama was getting dinner and uh, an old Indian buck came up and she had a, no, they didn't have screen doors then, so she had a chair across the door. She had dinner ready and I can remember he stepped over that door just as big, you know, and the chair hit the end of the table and he sat down. And Mama fed him, gave him everything he wanted to eat. He sat there and ate and I got up and thanked her and walked out. So we got along all right, the Indians, and so on and so forth. But aunt and uncle and, 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 and some of her, their boyfriends would go out to a dance someplace and those Kiowa Indians would bury their dead up in the tree. They'd put a, some kind of a box or a wagon box or something and wrap them in these blankets. So one night they come, all of them on horseback and come by and some one of the boys got up there and tied a blanket to the corner or the rope to the corner of that and unrolled that Indian in there and took the blanket. And Gertie would told that about that when she was a girl. Just such little tidbits of stuff that's like that, you know, and so on and so forth. We grew up. So Papa decided to go to Durango, Colorado. So we went south out of uh, the Washita and uh, basin and, and went south across the Canadian and then down at, at Canadian, he got me a little saddle and made me spurs out of nickels and put on my feet. I was a little cowboy. And I had to wear a bonnet and a dress, of course, and drove the old pet. And he said, now, sister, keep those cows going. Don't you let them sink down here in this, this, this water. So we got across the Canadian River all right and stopped over that Cowans and so on. Then he came on and stayed there about, I don't know, a month or two, so on. There wasn't any, any bridge across that Canadian uh, for wagons. There's a railroad bridge, but there wasn't any other. And you just, so one day there was a tongue of a buggy sticking out of the sand. And Papa and Mr. Cowan, now Mr. Cowan had one leg off and he would ride a horse though. And they got down, down there and they dug that buggy just about out. And they heard a roar and they looked up and there came a big wave of water and buried their buggy and they never did get it out. So that sounded like, well, I was this little old kid down there then and they had two little boys that we played with for a while and then Papa swung back up this way and stayed at Chatham one night and then he went to Gage and I don't know, he got onto some school land there and time to put we kids at school and he stayed there and never did go to Durango. So we stayed in, Sh and that was in 1901. And we stayed there then all these years and they both died down there, Gage. And so uh, I finished high school in Winoka and uh, mama sent me up there to stay with an old aunt and take care of her baby that had colic. And I finished high school there and then came home and wanted to go to Alva and be a nurse. But there wasn't money enough to send me and I, I couldn't, <laughs> I didn't know about how to run off and, and uh, get a ride or anything like that and I'd have done so. But anyway, I never did get to be a nurse. So then in 14, 1914, I came up here and I went to work for the Tom and Edwards in their 
general store here in Shattuck. And uh, we, uh, we all, there was Lex Schartzer and, and George Chance and Elmer Pound, and we all got on the job at six o'clock every morning. And we worked, everybody stayed open until 10, 11, 12 o'clock at night. And the picture show was open and for the second show while we had to stay open. People get their groceries, then leave them. And uh, we had to stay open until they, on Saturday night, until they would. Get. So I spent six years like that. I didn't go to dances, I didn't go any place, only to work. I was on the job every morning at six o'clock and stayed there. And so some one of the merchants decided we ought to close up at least nine o'clock. Well, Mr. Schultz down here was a German merchant, and he said it can't be done. He said these farmers have to come in at night and trade. But uh, finally somebody for enforced it, and we closed at 9. And uh, that's the way it went until I got married and quit and uh, kept house for 27 years, and my husband died with the cancer. So then I went back. And then Mr. Brawl was in, had a drugstore here, and he asked me to uh, come and work for him. He said, I'll give you $160 a month. And we was only getting, I was, only, I was working down at the bank then, my husband was cashier, and, and it was wartime, and men were scarce, so the, uh, Mr. John Stewart said, well, we'd run his wife and me, and Roscoe's wife, Roscoe Calloway is my husband, he was cashier, said to have them to help run the books. So I became a uh, bookkeeper. And, and this World War II? Oh. What is it? With this World War II? That was in the uh, na uh, Shack National Bank. Okay. What year was that? That was 19 and, uh, well, he died in 45. Okay. And three years before, I worked in there okay. three years. Okay. So 40, 42. Yeah. 42 then is when I worked there. And Miss Stewart. <coughs> and uh, so then when he died with this cancer, I was uh, at home, yeah, uh, he died, it was buried the 6th of December, and so Mr. Brawl called me and wanted me to work, and he said he'd give me $160 a month. Well, I went there and went to work, and I worked there, uh, I don't know how many years I worked there for him, and we went at 7 o'clock and we worked 11, 12 at night in the drugstore. So, so my life was work. It, well, I didn't have time to go to dances or anything like that and, mm -hmm. and parties or nothing else. And so uh, I worked for him until he sold out and then I worked for the other two or three that bought in and then I finally quit and went to Ponca City where my sister was. She was in business and took a little vacation. And, then I came back and Jackson's had a drugstore down here in the uh, North End. And I worked there for them until they sold out. So then an old aunt and uncle from Beaver, they didn't have any children, he was a cattle man. And he came to me and, and uh, they did and he had uh, cancer of the glands and she had all kinds of cataracts and rheumatism and heart trouble and everything. And uh, they wouldn't, I had a nice job at the hospital at this time. And uh, so uh, I uh, gave up my job there and went up and took care of him for 10 years till they died. So I said to myself, well, I believe I'll just leave Main Street. Of course, I had worked in ready to wear for Mr. Kane two or three others in the haberdashery who had women's clothes and everything. And uh, so I said, I'll just believe I'll leave the field open for younger people and I'll just go on with this uh, kind of nursing that's uh, uh, take care of sick people. And so I've been doing that all these years and uh, so on. And uh, so my life has been mostly work and, and of course I've been to the West Coast I've been to, to uh, uh, up near Washington State, and uh, then I've been in, in Wyoming and came through that part of the country, and I've been south and 
to Kentucky and everything with my husband and his people. And then I went to uh, Connecticut and crossed the Hudson River to Yonkers and New York and New Jersey and Philadelphia and seen that part of the country. So that's about the... <laughs> Can you tell me, as a little girl, what chores did you do on the farm? On the farm? Yes, ma'am. Milking cows, taking care of the chickens and feeding calves and, and uh, milk and churning. And then came in and take care of a little baby. There was 11 a week kids and I was the oldest one. <laughs> so I had to come in and diaper them and bathe them and take care of them. Little boys, we had seven little boys and three girls lived and one died. So that was my chores and just general chores. And about doing laundry? Is what? Doing laundry. How'd you do that? Oh, we did that on the board, sister and I. Mm -hmm. Pop had a washing machine for us once and the little twister came along and broke the top off of it and then he finally got us another one and, and then we wore it out and sister and I did washing on the board and and uh, heated the water off doors under a tree and on the when it was cold and wild, nice weather winter time we had heated on the stove and uh, just regular old farm work that's all there was to what it. What kind of soap did you use? Well mama made soap sometimes and then she had to buy soap. Did you make soap? And uh, she made it I didn't make it at all and uh, uh, we didn't raise a lot of hogs and eat a lot of pork, so we didn't have a lot of grease and stuff to make mm -hmm. things up like that. But uh, we children were all healthy and we didn't have to have doctors and things like that with this and so on and so forth. But anyway, we were, uh, we all grew up mm -hmm. and we've all have homes and everything like that. I never did have any children. My husband was a person who didn't want children, so we never had any. I wanted five <laughs> on the three boys and two girls. Mm -hmm. He didn't want any children. So when he said they are dying, he said, we should have had some children. I said, well, how well I know that. So he was an only child, and his mother died when he was quite small, and his grandmother and grandparents raised him, and he didn't know what childhood was, I guess, and so on and so forth. But anyway, my life hasn't been too bad or too hard or anything like that, only just an average life, you know, and I didn't, uh, I'm like my dad. I'm not one of these kind that uh, gets fussy because they can't go any place or do anything. I take it as a everyday life and just go ahead with it. So Where did you start to school? Gage. Gage. What year? No, no, I went to Hammond, down at Hammond, Oklahoma. There was a country school down there, and the sister and I, I was six and she was five when we started school. We walked two miles to school. What was the name of the school? Well, I don't remember. It's a little old country school, made <laughs> one room affair, mm -hmm. and we'd take our dinner buckets and, and uh, had a, some kind of an arbor to play under. And, so on. How many students attended that school? Well, that's all the only school we attended in, in down in that country. How many students were there? How well, many how many kids? I don't know. Uh, the little old kid, I don't remember. I expect there's about fifteen or twenty or maybe, something like that. Seemed like we had quite a few to play with. Yeah. Was it all eight grades in one room? All grades in one room. What was your teacher's name? I don't know that. How did she teach eight grades at once? Well, she commences with the little folks first, you know, on their little classes and, and uh, goes on up. That's all. They just like, and when I came, we came here and, and went to Gage, it was just about the same way. There was one room, and there's about 45 of us in that room. And she did the same way. We'd start in with the low grades and come back up. Hmm. Elizabeth Fowler was her name and uh, so on and uh, so that's the uh, that's the way we uh, 
we walked to school all those years, and there was <laughs> we kids, and then there was always two or three boys in the neighborhood went with us and came back from school, and all those kind of things, just a bunch of kids going to school. We only had a, well, we had to walk across a section and across the, another 120 acres or 60 acres and then across the creek and into town and so on and so forth like that. Okay, what, how did the town of Hammond look when you first went there? Well, my recollections of it, I was a, it was a little one horse town with a grocery store and post office and and uh, a bank and and uh, kind of an Indian town as well as a white man's town and uh, the Red Moon Agency was there for the Indians and uh, so on. Did and you get to know any of the Indians very well? Well, I was such a little kid, we was kind of scared of them when I lived there. And uh, then, as I say, it was seven. I was seven when we left there and came up here. So I didn't have much uh, association with the yeah. Indians. This aunt and uncle were young people, Papa's brothers and sisters, and they had more association with the Indians and, and to go with them yeah. and be with them and everything like that. Could you describe the town of Shattuck when you first moved here? Well, Shattuck was a nice big town. It wasn't, uh, I don't know how many, what the population was, but uh, when I came up here, why, there was uh, a nice uh, group of businessmen. Of course, the town has uh, lengthened out, and uh, the Shattuck National Bank was down on the north end at that time, and uh, so uh, I, uh, lived here all those 27 years and uh, liked it very much and we had a home and, and uh, so not long ago I bought the same old home back. I, I sold, he died in 45 and I went to work and worked at Bras all these years and all and so some time in there I sold that in 46 uh, or 7 or 8 or something like that I sold that old home and uh, so uh, there's been several families lived in it. So it was for sale the other day, and I had been uh, had this home in Beaver, and uh, a party wanted to buy it, and I wanted to come back here and fix my home uh, for here. And so I bought the old place back. So I'm having it remodeled and fixed up so that I'll have three bedrooms for my brothers and sisters come to see me, and so on. There's three of our brothers that passed away, but uh, there's enough of us to kind of meet and have family affairs once mm -hmm. in a while, and so on. How many nieces and nephews do you have? How many what? How many nieces and nephews do you have? Well, let's see. Frank, I have one boy. And uh, uh, Frank had uh, two boys and two girls, and Harry had one boy, and Temple had uh, five children. And Charlie didn't have any children. He had an adopted child, uh, child and so on. So they had, it wasn't, uh, then Nona Pearl had two children. So they were great big families, like, uh, like was in our family. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, uh, Papa's five family were large. Grandfather had uh, 11 children, like Papa had, and so on like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, my, my, my life has been mostly work. Mm -hmm. I haven't had time to fly around. And of course, when I was had a home, I belonged to this, uh, clubs and church and society here in town. and and. Uh, got along fine that way, you know, and everything, and had a nice life here. Mm -hmm. And so I've been in and out since uh, uh, 70. I, Aunt Gertie died in 70. Uncle Ben died before that in 70. And so then I've been in and out, and uh, working. I uh, worked 
five years for the mosses now. And I worked about a year in Arnett and uh, two years for another person. And so I've been spending my time like that, doing that. When you can't, uh, uh, in this kind of work, you don't have any time for social life or anything. You very seldom get to go to church because you got to be on the job, mm -hmm. looking after somebody that's ill that's right. or sick. Do you remember Statehood Day, the day Oklahoma joined the Union, 1907? Well, I know it in a historical way by Paul, but we never did uh, make, there's never much to do about it out here that I ever knew of, and so on. And, uh, Do you remember that day of what, what you did on that day? No. Mm -hmm. I don't remember what all we did and, those and so on and so forth. We, we kids was always pretty busy going to school and then uh, uh, we had to uh, farm. Mm -hmm. Brother and I did most of the farming okay. and I, we cultivated and cut hay and we'd done everything that had to be done on the farm. He was gone so much at the time. Did you, did you do any plowing in the fields? I, I did cultivating. Brother did the plowing. Mm -hmm. But he did the, I did cultivating. And then we put pulled cotton and pulled room corn and, and had, took care of the cap of corn and, they, and had about 15 or 20 head of cattle to look after and all those kind of things so on and so forth, so. But Shattuck has, uh, uh, hasn't uh, slumped or anything like that. Shattuck has kept up her uh, morale as long as, as uh, the town. It never did go down or anything like that. It's kept building up all the time. Of course, we used to have two banks, and then the, uh, Jake Pryor came up here from Gage. He was in the banking business there, and he went to Follett and uh, went into the, uh, I believe it was in the uh, Ford business. And that was, he, he knew nothing about that, so he came back to, to, to Shattuck and stopped here and started another bank, he and Mr. Elton. But uh, they soon quit. There wasn't business, business enough for three banks. And the other bank eventually quit after about four, four or five years. So the uh, Stewarts have had the banking business here all the time and everything. And uh, so that's just about all the just regular business and so on. Tell me about what you did during World War One, 1917, 1918. World War One. Well, there wasn't any incidents that <laughs> makes me remember it too much. Did you do any of the knitting or wrapping bandages during the war? I knitted sweaters, and uh, I don't know that I did much of the of the bandage work or anything like that. I was, uh, as I say, I was busy on this job all the time and so on. But uh, I did, I knitted several sweaters mm -hmm. and so on like that. But, and my husband was, went to Oklahoma City to be, to go to the uh, war in uh, and they turned him down because he had bad eyes and, and teeth. And they said we didn't have any dentists and any doctors in the army at that time. And so we didn't, uh, he didn't get to go. But uh, so there was uh, Mrs. Foster that had charge of some of that work. She's became a widow and she went to New Mexico to live and finally died. And uh, so we helped her do that kind of work in, in some of the 
different days that she had picked out for us. Was she with the Red Cross, Mrs. Foster? I don't remember what she did, rather than just mm -hmm. took care of this. Uh, uh, they put her in for a while, and then she got tired of it or something, and they put somebody else in. Yeah. Ever meet any of the trains coming through with the soldiers on them? The soldiers going to the war? Well, there wasn't very many soldiers here at that time. Mm -hmm. We was all, uh, I was studying German, I wanted to, and uh, so when that war came on, they made us put away our German books and, and uh, make, thought we was going to get in the uh, worse war than we were, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, then they kind of put, uh, some of these Germans kind of had to toe the mark and had to be, become a real Americans, and so on and so forth like that, but they going to stay here, so on. Mm -hmm. um, was there much discrimination against the German-speaking people that lived in Shattuck? No, Germany? no, there weren't. We all, we took uh, very good care of them and, and treated them right and everything like that. There wasn't anything that was, was uh, uh, out of order at all. We never had any demonstrations or anything like that. What did you do on Armistice Day, the day the war ended? I can't tell you. I can't. How did the depression of the 1930s affect you and your husband? In 1930? Yeah, the depression, the Dust Bowl. Oh, the Dust Bowl. <laughs> well, we had plenty of, of uh, dust flying around here for a while. Come over the north terrain and you couldn't see anything and so on. And people out playing golf, they'd get blinded. They'd have to stop the side of the road and the dust go why and all like that. We had been to uh, fall at our place that day or something, and it came back and just got in and went. Um, and my husband went to the bank for something or other. We got out and, and uh, looked up and saw that great wall of dust coming in, and birds coming in ahead of it. So we got in home and got in the car and the garage and everything. And uh, Mrs. Colbert got scared. She lived next door, and she came in. To, Stayed and we looked out and watched the dust go by and and so on that day and uh, but we had many times I'd get a meal ready and of course you'd have to leave the lid on the pot and go and lift it up and get your plate out and set the lid back down and go and eat your meal and we never set the table many times we just didn't have any and uh, so our house seemed light tight enough too, but yet there was dust in it, and so on. You couldn't keep it out of the house? And so we just had to keep the doors, windows closed and everything. Mm -hmm. It's left there. But uh, Did you have difficulty breathing in no, those dust storms? No, he and I never had any trouble at all like that. And some people did, however, that had sort of asthmatics or something like that, you know. But we never did have any... We never did have any serious trouble. Never have, we never had uh, sickness till he come down with this cancer, and so on and so forth, and he that lasted six months, and so on. How about the flu epidemic of 1918? Well, we had good doctors here and seemed to take care of them, and uh, I never did have the flu, mm -hmm. but uh, lots of people did have a touch of it and so on like that. But uh, anyway, uh, it wasn't as serious here. People didn't die like they did in some places and so on. I never did uh, know much about uh, uh, other territories and things like that or what you'd read in the paper or something like that because we didn't go any place and so on. 
anyway, it was, uh, everything went off just real nice in, in Shattuck. We never had anybody have any trouble or anything like that. No disasters or killings or murders or anything like that here and so on. But uh, we've had uh, good churches and good schools and, and any of the outlaws come through here like the James brothers or those guys? No, we never did have any, the, the, time, uh, the time I was here or Gage, I was alone. <clears throat> when I lived at Gage, we never heard about outlaws coming in or anything like that and stealing or anything. Yeah. What about the tornado of 1947? The one that really tore up Woodward, that hit Gage? It was right after World War II. And it started over here by Glacier, Texas, and went all the way up almost to Kansas. Well, it it didn't do any damage here that I know of, that I re remember of. I understand it hit Higgins, tore it up pretty bad, yes. I think. Well, I'll tell you, it came west south of us. I had gone home to supper from the drugstore and uh, looked out and saw that cloud, and I got back down to the drugstore. Ms. Bro had said to me in the afternoon, she said, there's going to be a storm. And uh, so when I get, got back from supper, I, uh, Mr. Bro said, <coughs> you and Ethel better go up to the hospital. I said, I think this. So, and so we went up there, and she and I worked all night up there, and uh, taking care of sick people. and seen him get brought in with sticks in them and slivers and and uh, all the terrible conditions they were in. Where were they being brought from? Higgins. Higgins. And, uh, yes, it was Higgins, yes. They, and so we had, uh, uh, then there was three of us. Let's see, Mrs. Uh, Ed Stewart and myself and, and uh, Mrs. Fulton. Dr. Fulton were on that committee and uh, looking after those things and so I was chairman of the thing of the committee and so we gathered up clothes and we did all kinds of things and I kept uh, uh, two or three of those government women that came in from Washington DC at my home I was working and I turned the house over to them and they, they had uh, part of their men would come in. And uh, so they had an awful nice time in living there. They could cook and eat and, <laughs> and have a cocktails or whatever they wanted. Didn't make a difference to me and so on. So we had a nice group that came here to take care of the, of the uh, business of uh, disaster like that. Did you go to Higgins after that tornado? Did you visit the town? I went later on. I never went right then or anything like that because it's so old. Yeah. How many injured were brought up from Higgins to the hospital? I, I can't tell you. We had the, <coughs> the doctors called in, a doctor and two or four nurses from, uh, from uh, Fort Worth or Dallas or someplace. They flew in here to help take care of the hospital. There was all kinds of injured people in there. They were just pitiful, you know, the way they looked and everything. And we did all we could to ease them and everything like that. And the one little boy came in, throw a big old sliver run through him and all this, that, and the other, just so on. So Higgins was torn up and just real bad, yeah. the south end of it. How know. many were killed in Higgins? Well, I can't remember just how many. But uh, there was several died after they came up here, and so on. I don't never did keep track of that or anything like that. Then we had to make up clothing, gather up clothing, and and uh, uh, our committee did, and and uh, send it out here in the country in different places for people who had lost everything and their homes torn up and everything. And uh, so we were busy with that until it was. I think about three weeks of it here, and uh, those uh, ladies left and went to Washington, back to Washington, so on and so forth. 
and uh, so uh, that's about the worst disaster we had, but it didn't hit Shattuck at all. My brother lived west of town, about seven miles, and he said there was all kinds of papers uh, flying out to the air from uh, Higgins or from down in there someplace, you know, that it, as it came through and uh, so on, uh, from homes or whatever it was, was, some business papers and so on, things like that, you know. But it never did strike Shattuck to really do any damage or anything like that. It swept far enough. But it did in Woodward. It shook up the south part of Woodward quite a little bit. And let's see what they say. It started in uh, in Texas and landed in wound up in uh, Kansas. Kansas. It was quite over two hundred miles on the ground yeah. and never lifted. Yes, it, and so on like that, you know. Mm -hmm. I think it said it started at White Deer, Texas, and, and then went to Mule Shoe or White Horse, Kansas, or someplace like that, and yeah. blew out. Mm -hmm. So, as uh, mm. much as I, I was just busy, Mrs. Stewart and Mrs. Fulton and I, on these committees and looking after people and getting clothing and all that kind of stuff, you know, busy and so on. But uh, we were just blessed, that's all. Did you do any work for the war effort during World War II? No, I don't. Uh, did I believe, uh, did anything important or anything outstanding well, like or anything? The, like the bond drives or, um, you know, in 1941 through 1945. You help in the bond drives? No, I didn't. I didn't. Uh, I gave, but I didn't. Uh, mm -hmm. Didn't help. Mm -hmm. So on like that. Mm -hmm. So on like that. But anyway, it was uh, to reminisce. You know, the years I have have slipped away so fast with me. I've never had time on my hands, and so. I've always been busy doing something or other, and uh, there's too much, uh, uh, too many n nice people and too many nice things and to uh, to just really make, uh, to be dreary with me. I try to keep an uh, uh, outlook on the life of happiness and pleasures and things like that and help people and do things like that. All these years I've been working in this uh, field of public affairs. So I've been, I've been with this Moss family five years. The and Moss I, family? Uh, Ray R. Moss mm -hmm. family. And uh, they live here in town. And so uh, he's, uh, been bothered with cancers and so on and so forth. And so they took him to Oklahoma City and put that ready uh, on his throat and face. To, and so now I'm taking care of him and his nephew and his wife's coming up the 18th and taking him to Oklahoma City for uh, examination. And so and he spent about a month down in Oklahoma City but anyway, uh, life is what you make it. If you want to be useful, happy, and contented, you can do it, or you can be on the sorry side. And I've always looked forward to the bright side, <laughs> trying to <laughs> make life as, as contented and happy as could be for our family and for my husband and all. He was a man that was always ailing and so on and I had to doctor him and take care of him and everything like that mm -hmm. so that's the way it has been with me and mm -hmm. well anything else you want to talk about so uh, <laughs> that seems like the
I thought this was going to be, <coughs> we don't have to uh, talk about the business peoples up and down Main Street, do we? Oh, we can. Well, we... Who were some of the early day businessmen here in Shattuck? The early day. The bankers and the doctors and the lawyers. Well, I don't know much about those days. As a kid, I never came up here. And, but after I came up to work then, why, well, I found the Stewarts were people from Milan, Missouri. They came out here and around Follett and took land and stayed there. And, and then they came to Shattuck and went in the banking business. And I got acquainted with them after I came up here and so on. And uh, then we had uh, plenty of, uh, of the Masons and the, the Geibels and the Schultzes and all of those people, you know, living here in business and everything, different times, so on. But uh, anyway, it's, uh, it's been uh, all these years. I came here in 14 and now I'm still here doing all I can to help the sick folks and do things. Yeah. Mrs. Blake is uh, an old friend. She, Ms. Ed Stewart and, and uh, myself always looked after Ms. Blake, and now she's a widow, and I still go to see her, but I told her I had, had a patient now that I couldn't leave, and I wanted her to try and find somebody to rely upon to get her groceries and her mail and, and things like that and so on and so forth mm -hmm. but anyway she's uh, she's a wonderful person and all that but she's 96 and so that way why well, she just has rheumatism in her knees she said if I'd have worked like you have she said I wouldn't be in this position she said I sat up here and slept and had my feet sticking out on a pedestal she said I'm an easy gummed up, she said. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. uh, well, ma'am, thank you. And so on and so forth. This is December 13th, 1984. Yeah, it sure is. My name is Joe Todd. This is an interview with Mrs. Doris Larison in Shattuck, Oklahoma. Ma'am, where were you born? Uh, when or where? Both. Where uh, and where? In Osage City, Kansas. And when's your birthday? December the 2nd, 1907. Who was your father? Otto Massey. And your mother? Lena Howard Massey. What kind of work did your father do? Well, uh, all the time mostly it was in a general type store. Mm -hmm. In those days the general store had everything. <laughs> How come your parents moved to Oklahoma? Well, uh, my father had a, a cousin living down here, I guess. Yeah, it was a cousin, an uncle and a cousin. And he moved down here to work in their store. And what year was that? 1911, I believe. 1911. As near as I can tell. And you moved to what part of Ellis County? Gage. Gage? Mm hmm what are your first memories of Gage? Oh, a lot of things. <laughs> Tell me some things you remember. Oh, uh, well, when we first got there, my, my big, uh, I was frightened to think that, that we were moving to a country that had sandburrs. <laughs> and uh, my first thing I did just about was I went out in the backyard and picked these little tiny yellow flowers. I thought they were so pretty and went running back in the house with them for my mother to see the pretty flowers I'd found. And uh, they told me those were sandbar flowers. And I was just horrified <laughs> to think I had picked the things. <laughs> and anyway, that was my first experience almost engaged. Mm -hmm. But um, What kind of chores did you do around the house? Oh, chopped kindling and carried in coal and took care of the chickens. And uh, we had always had some chickens in, in the backyard. and. Uh, stuff like that and carry water and we didn't have very many conveniences in those days. How big was Gage at that time? 
I don't know, but quite a bit bigger than it is now. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, what did downtown look like? Just a pretty nice, thriving little town. Were the streets paved? Oh, no. No, it was all just mud streets. Tell me about the mud streets when it rained. How bad were they? Well, not too awful bad because there's so much sand over there. Mm -hmm. The streets are pretty sandy, and uh, but it was uh, wet and mud puddles went around. We, the kids like to play in the mud puddles. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you start the school? Where? Yes, ma'am. At Gage. And what was the name of the school? The Gage, just the Gage Public Schools. Okay. How many students were in your school? I don't know, but it was a pretty good sized school at that time. Uh, I graduated from high school in Gage, and there were 45 in my class. What year did you graduate? Uh, 1929. I was out a couple of years, but I didn't go. Mm -hmm. Do you remember World War One? Oh yes. What did you do during that war? Did you? Oh, we. Uh, <laughs> we did without sugar, and we, uh, the one we, we ate at town quite a lot because my parents both worked in the store, and uh, when we ate at town, well, there was no sugar for our iced tea or anything like that. Of course, I never did use it, and I still don't, but uh, just things like that, and we, uh, as children, we were um, taught to uh, knit and crochet, and, and we made uh, washcloths and things like that to send to the soldiers, and little packets of things, and, and uh, that's about mostly it. What did you do at Armistice Day, the day the war ended? That, I can't imagine it, but I just don't remember. I don't remember that it was even happening. Yeah. After high school, what did you do? My father was, at that time, running a furniture store. And uh, he was in very bad health, and I managed the furniture store uh, while he was, uh, and then later we sold it, and, uh, and I wasn't in the store anymore from then on. Then on I uh, uh, typed for uh, the man that I married was working in the uh, Saw conservation office. It used to be at Gage. And I guess that's what you call it. I don't know whether it was that or USDA or something. Anyway, and I typed up form, uh, forms that they had there, whole stacks of them for people to fill out. Mm -hmm. um, you were in high school in the 1920s. Mm -hmm. Were you a flapper? I don't know. I might have been. I know I sure wore short dresses and had my knees hanging out. Did you bob your hair? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure did. What is a flapper? Just just an ordinary girl, only just just uh, really got around and got into things and mm -hmm. were busy with everything. You did the Charleston? No. I didn't dance. You didn't dance? No. Tell me about the Depression, the 1930s, and the dust. Storms. Oh, that was terrible. Uh, the dust was awful, and uh, at that time, well, I was married in 1934, and uh, my husband was working for this uh, soil or this USDA, whatever it was. I don't know. He worked, he was on the corn and hog program, and uh, we. Uh, well, to get along at home, my father had died, and, and uh, my mother and I were living by ourselves. And um, you just got along any way you could. You just you had no income. We did have some land holdings that, that gave us a little bit of income, but very, very little. And it was about all we could do to scrape together the taxes to pay to pay for the ta the money to pay for the taxes. And um, anyway. Uh, we would go out and gather uh, wild plums and can them and, to, and make plum jelly for desserts, and that was about all we had. And uh, when the government was uh, going out and shooting cattle, why, uh, we would uh, get somebody to, of course we couldn't do it, but we would get some man to bring us a half a beef when they would sneak them out from this bunch of cattle they'd killed. 
they'd bring us a half a beef, we'd grab it and, and can it that very evening because it was hot weather. We didn't dare try to start, we didn't have refrigeration then like we do now and we would uh, put this beef up and that was all the meat we had. Why were they shooting the cattle? They said they couldn't feed them. I mean, the uh, uh, pasture was just no no good, and there was nothing to feed them with, and they didn't have money to to buy feed for them, so they were just doing away with them. Now, was your husband was he with the WPA at that time? This hog and corn program? It wasn't WPA. It was uh, USDA or something. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, 